<laughs> yeah, so these NBA rookies are different. Before we get into the video, like and subscribe, share with your friends. Um, make sure you follow the pages to my social media and the link below. Yeah, these NBA rookies are really, really different. I wanted to start off the video completely different because I'm not gonna lie, I, I just been blown away about I wanted to start off this video. So yeah, like I said, these NBA rookies are just completely different. I wanted to start off this video a little differently because like, I just want to show my emotion. Like these NBA rookies have been really, really good as far as like some don't look like rookies. Like some look like they've been in the league for a long time. And like I don't think we've seen that in a minute. Like since Luca. Like Luca looked like he was well obviously he played pro basketball since he was 16, but he looked like he was a pro in the NBA for the longest. But like a lot of these rookies look like they're made for the NBA, like they've been here for a long time. And I'm not just talking about the top guys, like even Christian Braun. First game he barely played, and the next two games, he's playing above 15 minutes. Because you can't keep a guy like that off the bench. I mean, you can't. You can't keep him on the bench because he just, he's an NBA player. He knows how to win. He's a winner all his life in high school and college. And he's going to come to the NBA. He, already, he automatically knows his role, and that's why he fits. And then when we're looking at some of the top guys, Keegan Murray just played his first game yesterday, and like you automatically seeing the impact that he has. The team was playing faster, they were hitting more shots, they were in a really good game against the Clippers. The Clippers just a deep team, they had the better player that night, but even their best player, the Kings, De'Aaron Fox, he played really good. But Keegan Murray, I love the way they're using him, um, especially him and DeMontis Sabonis running multiple pick and rolls. That's something that can make them really dangerous because you're going to either have to stick up on Keegan because he will torch it, or Keegan is able to make that pass to DeMontis Sabonis, who's also a really good roller. And then vice versa, you can run a pick and roll with DeMontis Sabonis as the ball handler, and that can also be hard because DeMontis Sabonis is one of the best big man passes we've seen of all time. But they look really, really good. I'm, if you see me looking all over the place, I just want to get this out of the way. I don't know which camera to look at because I looked at my, my camera that I just bought, and on one of my videos, it looked like I was looking all over the place. But then when I'm looking at my laptop, it looks like I'm looking right at y'all. So I'm just, I'm just going to look. I'm going to look. But Keegan Murray has looked really good. Um, Jaden Ivey. Jaden Ivey looked really good until yesterday. We'll talk a lot why he didn't look good yesterday. Even yesterday, he looked pretty decent. But, like, in the matchup, that was, like, the main headline of the game. He, he kind of got bullied. Jaden, Jabari Smith. Jesus Christ. It's bad. It's bad. And I don't expect him to shoot this bad. Um, for the rest of the season, but that's the thing. All he's doing is shooting. You took a, a specialist that's just a shooter at three, and yeah, we can bet on the potential. I just don't see the potential that a lot of people see. A lot of people gonna sell you that whole he's future KD shit. And no, no. Even KD didn't come into the league this raw. KD was a little bit raw. Paul is coming into the league, but like Jabari is just a shooter, and it's not like he's a sniper sniper. He can get you a few shots a game. He's a he's a good shooter, but like. KD was like, shit, look at his look at his college career. Like, he's one of them ones. So, them comparisons are stupid. Shane and Sharp, he, he's even looked decent. I'm um, happy to actually see him play basketball. He's actually looked decent. Even the lower tier guys, Walker Kessler is coming into the league and winning, helping the Utah Jazz winning games, which is not probably the best thing for them. But they've been surprised in the league so far. He's been a huge part of that. Same thing with Jalen Durant. He's getting double doubles all of a sudden. Um, I see why they took him high. I'm not going to lie. They're probably going to make that switch between him and Isaiah Stewart really soon because, like, the dude is fucking huge, and he just gets rebounds at ease. Like, he's, he's glued to the ball, basically. So, I see why they're playing him, but the two guys I want to talk about, I want to get the first one out the way. Obviously, Paolo Bencaro. Um, I knew Paolo was nice. We all knew Paolo was nice. It's just to see it in the NBA, like, it just makes him better. First of all, I knew he was big, pause. But, like, I'm watching him against college kids. You know, like, college kids, you don't really have... Like, college kids, not every team is going to have a guy over above seven, six, eleven. And same thing kind of in the summer league. Not every team is going to have a big guy. But seeing him against big teams in the NBA, the nigga is huge. And that just makes it more crazy to how he's able to move the way he is, how the handle is so tight, um, how he's able to fit in certain lanes the way he is. It just... Watching his game, like, he looks super polished. And I think he's only 19, and that's the crazy part. It's just how these young guys just, they, they, how they, they play like this so good at a young age is fucking crazy to me. But, like, he's been looking really good. I love the way they're playing him, letting him control the ball a lot of the time. I actually love how they play in the team. Um, Cross Wagner, he, he's controlling the ball a lot. 
Paolo's controlling the ball a lot. Then after that, then they have Cole Anthony controlling the ball. And I actually like that, bro. Because Cole Anthony, he's a good player, but he's not a playmaker. He can't. He's decent, but I, I, don't, I don't even think he can playmake like that. So having two young guys that you're more comfortable in controlling the ball for the team, that actually know how to get others moving and how to get others on um, their open shots, I like that. And I like that from Jamal Mosley. But you've seen it with Franz and with Paolo and why this offense looks so good these first three games because those three, I mean, those two are controlling the ball and it just looks really good. And I love their pick and roll with each other. I love it because, again, another pick and roll that's super hard to stop. Um, and in other ways, how they're using him. They're playing him in a post and that's one of his streams coming out of college was his post game. You're seeing it against good teams. Yesterday, just dropped 23, I believe, on the Boston Celtics. Um, and he also played really good defense down the stretch. Um, with Jason Tatum, but yeah, he's he's looking polished, bro. Looking real polished. Um, and I'm excited for the future for the team because Franz, I'm, I'm a huge believer in Franz. I think Franz is really fucking good, bro. I don't think it's just an all star. Like I see top 25 player in Franz. It's just he's so polished and he doesn't really have a flaw in his game at all. At all, doesn't really have a flaw in his game, bro. I see a lot in Franz and I see superstar potential in Paolo Bancaro. I just love how those two are together. And like I said, the way that the coach is using them, I like this Magic team, bro. This Magic team is fun, exciting. Um, their league pass team, if you haven't watched the game, you have to. They're, 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 they're going to be box office pretty soon. Pretty soon, especially if they get a young pick. I'm praying, I'm, I'm really praying they get school. If they get school playing next year, damn their playoffs, because I'm expecting a huge year from Paolo. I'm expecting an all-star season from Franz next year. And he bounced that with school who's been playing with NBA players for two years now. That shit, that shit going to be fun. But Paolo, like I said, Paolo has looked amazing. He's looked amazing. The shot even looks amazing. And preseason was kind of flat. I was kind of worried about it. But, like, in the NBA, in the regular season, he's looked really good. His shots look really good. So I'm happy. I'm happy for his future. Now, the guy I wanted to talk about and the reason why I wanted to bring this video is because I told y'all Benedict Matherin is one of them. He's one of those guys, bro. And just to get this out of the way, I don't understand why he's coming off the bench, but then I do. Like, you can't keep a guy like Ben off the bench. It makes no sense. But then, like, Buddy Hill, 24 million, 30 years old. We want to get him off the team. Let him build a trade value. I understand the business, the business side. But shit, fucking <laughs> Benedict got to take Aaron Eastman's spot then. I understand you want to punch off the bench, but, like, damn. You're not even getting a punch in the start lineup because Aaron Eastman has been shooting it like that. Buddy has been shooting it bad. And we all we all know. One day Tyrese wants to score, one day he wants to just pass. Having a legit score in that start lineup can help, but I understand they don't want to win games. But I just need to see him in the start lineup because the shit that he's doing off the bench is crazy. He's playing starting minutes, of course, but averaging 23 off the bench. 23 six rebounds off the bench three games. Yes, I know a lot of people will be like, oh, this is an overreaction. No, motherfucker, this nigga is him. He is him. I, I just see Victor on the depot, bro. I see Patience Victor on the depot when looking at him. As far as the energy and the hunger, like, Vic, VO came not from nothing, but like when you're looking at his NBA career, getting traded out of nowhere twice when he thought he had a secure spot. And then going to Pacers in your first year on the Pacers, you're an all-star, and you're leading them to a fifth seed. You're going head-to-head -head with LeBron in the series. I see that same type of hunger in Benedict Matherin. The motherfucker said as soon as he got drafted, yo, LeBron's going to have to show me he's the best player in the world. He's gonna, And you see that in his game. He's going up on seven-foot-one players. He went up on Kristaps the other day like it was nothing, like there was nobody down there. He has no fear. And it's kind of like John Morant, like, because, like, no matter who's down there, he's going to go head up with you. And it's not like he's a one-dimensional guy. He's a fucking sniper. So to start off the season, he's averaging 24 points. Like I said, six rebounds, two assists, shooting 52% from the field and 52% from the three. And that's not on a low volume of shot. That is on 16 shots a game. The nigga is him, bro. He's really fucking good. Now, the one thing that Ben was kind of a question coming out of um, college was his shot creation and like he just blowing that all out the way in the regular season in, in the preseason in summer league he's showing me that like he can go out there and create buckets and we get shit like this in real NBA games in real NBA games not even but that's that's not that's a regular shot that's a regular shot that's not like a heave at the end of the shot clock no this is a regular shot hang dribble pull up and not touching the rim at all and, and the confidence is just there the confidence is there um 
And I can tell they love playing with this kid, bro. And look at the emotion, bro. Look at that shit. Same thing. The next fucking play. I'm going to slow down Hezzy right over your fucking head. Then, <laughs> yo, he's, I'm sorry I keep cussing, bro, because I just feel like, bro, when I'm right, I just get so hyped, bro, because I told y'all. This is a top five rookie in the class. I thought he should have been picked over Keegan. I thought he should have been picked over Jaden Ivey. I like that they picked Keegan. But I feel like Benedict Mathurin next to Cade would have been way better because they're trying. They have two guys that can play off ball, but they're more so ball handlers. When they play off ball, it's kind of hard. But this nigga right here can play off ball, and he's a way better shooter than Jaden Ivey would ever be. So if you would have put that next to K, that shit would have been fire, bro. That shit would have been fire again. He just, he's one of them. Now look at, this is his first basket in his NBA career. Look who he challenges one of the best shot blockers we have in this league. And look how difficult the shot was. Look how difficult that shit is, man. That's a great contest by Christoph Porzingis, and he's able to finish over him. But like, the thing is, he's going up against a 7-3 guy, like no problem, no hesitation. That's, that's crazy to me, bro. Like, yo, look at him, bro. Look at that. Oh, my. Again, on another shot blocker in Zach Collins is going up with no hesitation. That shit is unteachable, bro. Like, bro, his game is really fucking polished. Stop him down, shoot over him. Great defense. But the, the ability to stop him down. Y'all seen, if you've been a, a known watcher on my channel, I say this a lot when I do breakdown. The ability to stop him down is like, it's really key to being really good. And, like, look. This wall stops on it. Um, finish. That's just I mean. Yeah, sorry for that last clip. I was um, I was dark. My ring camera broke. Um, but I gotta fix it. It's fixed. But like I said, man, these NBA rookies is crazy. Um, we're doing a rookie ladder so far. Top three. I probably have I'm all bias. I'm I'm gonna have Benedict one, and even then, it's not really biased. When I say that, that's not crazy. I'm gonna have Paulo two, and I, I don't know who would I have three. I would say Jaden, because Jaden has been playing good. I'm not going to say that. Just in that matchup yesterday, he was throwing himself into a lot of double teams, a lot of big players, and he was getting killed down there. But he was rebounding the ball well. He did play really good yesterday, but Benedict just he stole the show. So, yeah, I put Jaden in that three. But other than that, man, this has been a really good, fun rookie class so far. And like I said, we're going to have a really good rookie year race because I don't expect the top two. They not stopping. They not. But other than that, man, that's – oh, shit, what the fuck? <laughs> Other than that, man, that's it for the video. Make sure you like and subscribe, share with your friends. Peace out.